Dialogue 6. Watcher. In the midst of man's rage, you are my calm. In the midst of confusion storm, you are my rock. In the midst of tears, you are my comforter. I have seen you riding upon the clouds and have heard your whispers in the breeze. Your palates are the trees and your tongues are the leaves. I have beheld rainbows in the darkness, and darkness is never dark for me because you surround me on every side. Your wings overshadow me as the illumination of a sunset sky above the sea. When I am utterly alone, then are you the closest to me. When the entire world falls away beneath me, then you stand the nearest to me. You offer me your hand, and I feel its caress upon my shoulder. Your whisper says, I am here, have no fear. When silence reigns and only the ringing in my ears can be heard, then is your voice as clear as the song of birds in a lonely forest and a chorus of angels accompanies your presence. When my heart is still and my mind is set aside, then do I feel your presence and know your thoughts, arising from within me and originating from far beyond these realms of illusion. The dream is real and the inner world is manifested plainly. All that I see and perceive is confused as the reality but the outer world is a veil of projected images lying between us. I yawn, and your breath fills me. I weep, and your laughter uplifts me. I sleep, and am awakened into actuality. I waken, and I am a sleepwalker going through the day. My body lives, and it is like carrying a dead weight, holding me to the earth like the leaden belts that divers wear to keep them down. I feel the pressure of the water all around me, and fear that I am drowning, and I yearn to be free and float up toward the light of the surface. Observing, I see all the people, like rats, in their mazes of streets and sidewalks, alleys and roadways. I watch their faces as they pass by in chariots of metal and glass. Anger and sorrow are intense within dead eyes that stare out at the race they are forced to run. Pressed for time, they are all in a hurry to get from one inane task to the same places they've already been. Driven nearly insane with the need to fill every moment of every day with a blur of activity. As if fleeing something that they cannot see, cannot truly perceive, and can never really escape. Observing, I walk among them, the undead of this land of the shadow of death, and I wonder if any know if any are thinking, or if anyone cares. The temples of materialism far outnumber the churches, and the churches are little more than social clubs for the board, just another inane destination. Gatherings intended to convince the rats that a better dream somewhere awaits them, if only they run a little faster and question the maze less. Observing, I see the flitting shadows and the sparks of divine light, I behold recurring patterns and catch glimpses of greater hands at work among the unconscious masses of frantic human flesh, oblivious to an entire reality that is not so much unseen as ignored, a reality that labors day and night to ensure that it continues to be ignored, for it flourishes at the edges of perception and is strongest when no one detects its intentions or learns of its true nature. I am blessed by you, for how many lives have I spent in this labyrinth of sleep and dreaming, caught in the dramas of this play of idle thinking, all the while believing it the most important thing, scurrying about and going absolutely nowhere in a hurry. I cannot envy nor hate when I stand and I see, for I can feel nothing for those who are merely shadows on the wall of a cave, here and gone again and again. Do they ever truly live, and how many can I awaken from this dreamy mist of things? You are my God, O oh God, the revealer of mysteries, and in your love is the promise of the lifeline that saves my sanity and brings the hope of true living. The logic of the shadows I cannot grasp, and the meaning of the merry-go-round seems madness, while those who write it 
happily regard me with pity. They hold me in contempt for seeking to convince them to get off the ride and to join me in my dance of folly divine. They do so love the circus of the damned, and I am little more than a killjoy from their dull vantage. Oh well. Praise to you, the dreamer whose dreams become realities and whose imaginings become the incubators of eternal beings. Truly, I owe you everything. Yet you accept nothing from the hand of man that is not given freely and from love, even as you freely give and are infinitely generous. Entire new worlds, new heavens, and new earths are open before us in exchange for the hardest and easiest thing to give. Love. Love and virtue. New vistas of peace and unfathomed pleasures few can really understand or begin to believe in. Nothing is impossible for you to bring into being, and, as the eternal child, you forever play within your own creations. Blessed God, you have been the adventure for me, and with you the discoveries are never complete. Amen and Amen.